Trends Tactics. We're back. We are back. Hello, and everybody. Welcome. Hi. This looks. Uh, wow. What the heck's going on in the background? Did you Did you turn <laughs> around yet? I, I, I'm in the Nor I'm in the Norwegian Auralis Borealis. I am uh, covering. No, I'm not. This is a fake background, ladies and gentlemen. I'm still <laughs> in Berlin, but I thought I would make something a bit more exciting. Love it. Yeah. For you. And exciting is exactly exactly what we will uh, be talking about. We have nothing else to lose because it's about Mr. Bobby Fischer, a very nice yes, subject. It is. It's, it's today we're going <clears> to <throat> look at some positions from, uh, from Bobby. Uh, obviously needs no introduction. And, uh, you know, when you think of what chess players represent along the years, um, you get, you know, you 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 categorize them by styles. So when you think of Anatoly Karpov, you think of the slow, methodical, positional style. When you think of Capablanca, you think of endgame genius. Uh, when you think of Mikhail Tal, you think of attacking, sacrificial genius. Mm -hmm. What was Bobby Fischer? Well, for me, Bobby Fischer belongs in that very unique category of universal player. He was good at everything. Endings, tactics, positional maneuvering games. He excelled in absolutely every single way. A bit like Spassky, I would say. Mm -hmm. Perhaps even a bit like somebody like, I would even say Gary. Gary Kay was a universal world champion in that sense. And perhaps there are others a bit earlier. Or maybe even you could say Alexander Alekhine as well might, might be a universal but uh, I would say Fisher and Alakine are a bit more uh, similar in, in stylistically because they, they worked very well with the initiative. Um, they were very clean players as well when it came to conversion. They were excellent. And today, of course, we're going to be looking at some of Fisher's tactical examples as, you know, to show that he, he was a great calculator. And um, yeah, so should be fun today to look at some of these positions. Excellent. For you at home, if you have found us on the YouTube algorithm on the search, uh, welcome to the show if it's the first time for you. Down below in the description, we can see all links, for example, for the tactical positions we're looking at, this, this direction, sorry. Because you can replay all the games um, on the Chessbase News site, where this uh, article is, and you can also download the PGN. And of course, this is a free tactical training for you, and you should do this every single Friday. And we give you the right. chance uh, to use your head to pause the video, especially, and think in your own time, because it's all about learning a bit about the chess tactics, trends tactics, to be precise. All right, so, uh, yeah. Exactly. And we're this is actually a game against uh, Tal, so. Yeah, so there's... the first example, so this first example here is the game Fischer Tal from Bled, 1961. Um, the position is an absolute mess, as you could expect, but it's also very clear that things have gone particularly badly for Mikhail Tal playing black. His king is in the center, uh, Fischer's castle queenside, the e-file is primed to be, uh, to be taken, but of, and, there may be more than one way to win this position, by the way. This is one of those positions where okay. it feels okay. as though, yeah, White has got many ways, but Fisher found an exquisite and uh, very, very strong way to, to win this position. So While we were talking, I had uh, some candidate moves, which I will um, okay. re release now. For you, it is time to pause the video right now. Check it out on your own if it takes five minutes or five hours or five days you can maybe always come hours. back maybe not even five days yeah <laughs> but um really take it, it if you're a weak player take it as a really hardcore exercise and try to solve this puzzle because it's just fun and it's even more fun if you can solve it after all so as always let's take a look at the candidate moves i think um any kind of check is very crazy. Of course, I was considering queen f7 check, but there That's is, a bit too crazy. is simply no follow up at all. The right. very, very first move and the most obvious would have been taking on h7, but very unfortunately, 
um, black can take the queen on f6, right. so which you, you didn't even see that immediately. Right. right. Taking on e5 will probably kill the whole position uh, with the queen. Um, mm -hmm. uh, because, yeah, you take back and then nothing has ca can be achieved. The next pawn will fall on g7. So there is yeah, actually... Yeah. I think that's an important thing. I'll just put that on the board that this would be a huge mistake because after queen takes, pawn takes, and now rook takes g7, this has clearly been a very, very uh, decent uh, transformation for black. Yeah. Where white is probably still a lot better, but black has got greater chances. Queens are off the board. You know, reduced material yeah. in general, greater chances. What so a funny pawn is. structure, by the way. I just really realized weird. this now. Four yeah. isolated pawns, super unusual. <laughs> so there's then only uh, two more things we have to. Um, we we cannot. Uh, I mean, taking on b6 doesn't seem to help either mm -hmm. uh, with the queen. So there's only two. Um, candidates in my head which come to mind which is the rook one of the rook going to e1 but also after taking the queen um, yeah, that then really I don't that. see the follow up I mean it's a check but the, the rook can go on e6 so there's only one last idea I have and I'm also not convinced which is taking on e5 with the pawn Brilliant. Because yeah. if the rook takes back on f6, we take back on f6, and then and this is how far I got. Because yeah, of of course you you have to just trust <laughs> that um, the rooks will double up on the e line and checkmate the king maybe, but maybe or unfortunately black might be quick enough. Or it is just even enough. Yeah, so I'm. I think um, e, yeah, f takes e5 has to be it. Yeah. I don't see any. And this is this is one of those rare uh, moments where it's like, um, I, I guess you 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 get the right idea by excluding all the others because nothing else works for me. And you you mentioned exactly. there's more ways to to win this, but Prob probably probably are. it follows up after this. Probably there are, but yeah. you're, you're spot on with basically, yeah, F2. Okay, cool. Well, and, the, and the point is that after rook takes e, F6, he takes F6. It's not just that the E file is open, but the, one of the first moves you were pointing out, which was the move bishop takes H7. I completely forgot. Yeah, that's Right, true. suddenly actually becomes a very, very serious threat. And in fact, this is the real reason why this position actually works, um, because... Mm -hmm. There's no real way to stop that. It's actually a relatively simple tactic. This is, well, of course, Fisher at this time. Um, even though this was Fisher in 1961 was probably only uh, what was he born? 43. When was he born? I'm um, actually not sure, but he was probably between 15 and 20 years old. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to get the exact. He was born in 43. 43 right. yeah okay so he yeah, was 18 so, actually uh, roughly yeah so he was he was sort of 18 at the time um and by this time of course fisher was already a monster i mean he was already multiple times i think u.s champion and very yeah. strong yeah. grandmas already so yeah so this was super easy and yeah and in the game in fact um you know the only thing to point out is that if tal does attack this pawn on f6 you can actually just take a timeout to protect. The oh, game. crunch it a bit more. Yeah. yeah Very nice. No way to stop Bishop takes H7 yeah. and, and, um, and the position's over. So relatively easy tactic to start off with. Great. Nice. Wow. Okay. One out of one. I'm, I'm quite happy. Hope you at home had the same impulse and the, the same ideas. Okay. Yeah. So. Next Number story. two, another Fisher game, and this time it's his game against Durao from Havana, 1966. When, of course, in those days, uh, you you know Americans were able to travel to Cuba, <laughs> and there was a bit of a cooperation. Barely, there. yeah. Many times where you know top Americans used to play in Cuba, so this was in 
1966 white to play. <clears throat> so what's going on here? What's your general assessment of this position first? Anna, what do you see? Well, I see, see I can actually not look at anything else than the spot on F6. Right. <laughs> it's just the juiciest night spot ever. The question right. is just how to follow up. So the assessment of this position, like where the heck, how did our rook get to B3? <laughs> okay. And maybe well, there's the a reason for that. The came up via A3, right? Yeah. So it's yeah. not so... But it looks like one, two, three moves until it gets out of the game again, unless we can maybe give some pressure on B6. Maybe that is part of a master plan after all. We will see. It's a super weird position again, and I, I like it. So, Not but, that weird. I yeah? Think it's no? That, no, I don't think it's that, I don't I think, think it's that unorthodox. Okay. I think this is a pretty standard position. Wow. Um, Which openings but, happening from, from something well, like that? Well, it could happen from a lot of different openings. This could happen from a Sicilian. It could happen from a, so, you know, an opening like a, um, a Berlin defense. It could happen from a huh. French. A whole bunch of different openings. Okay. This, this, Quite a standard structure. Okay, okay. Um, so my question to you then is, who, who is better and why? Well, I guess since we're white, we're probably going to win this, but I do not see yet how. Maybe there is a chance to... So black's pieces are also very blocked and probably they're even more blocked than white's pieces and maybe we can try to find a way to almost zug zwang get black into a zug zwang move something like that or give so little space for the pieces that black is yeah lost mm -hmm. is that okay. Well, I mean, you, you can look for Zugzwangs here, uh, de definitely, uh, or you can look for a way to, to brute force. But again, what I wanted to hear from you was that, you oh. know, White is on the verge of winning this position. <laughs> In terms of strategically speaking, Black's position is a complete disaster. Black cannot move the bishop from f8 because the pawn on h6 would be hanging. Mm -hmm. So, for example, Black would probably, in most positions, desire to play bishop e7. To cover these two squares, but then he loses the h6 pawn. Yeah. The knight is completely stuck as well because it's guarding b6. Mm. The rook is in a terrible position on c6, passive guarding b6. The only good piece that uh, black has is the rook on d8. Yeah. Okay. And in comparison, white has got. Very active knights. The world. The world. Yeah. Okay. Two beautiful knights, two beautiful rooks, more space. Hmm. Funny. King. So it's, it, you know, I look at this position and I just immediately think this is close to losing. Like, like there should be a way. Okay. What will be the way? So it's... For you to stop or pause the video again, because yep. we will try to push out a couple of moves. So what happens after knight f6? I mean, clearly this, okay. this so has to be an option. So if you look at knight f6, there's only one, only one move, move. King e7. And then... Oh, there's another knight uh, check. Oh, I can see... I can... I'm sure you can I see. can see a plan maybe Re requires a little bit of preparation so there's another check on g8 so now we would have a draw <laughs> right but of course we can do better i guess what would happen after knight d2 going to wow. e4 giving a check and check and oh wow you want to that's an incredible mate. I'm going to put that on the it's, board because it's so incredible. Yeah, it's not working. Just so that people see what you're talking about. <laughs> yes. You want to do check, and then on king e8, you want to play knight e to f6 checkmate, which is one of the most incredible double knight checkmates <laughs> That's very you've ever cute, seen yeah. in your life. Very beautiful. <laughs> the only problem, of course, is that... The king um, would go to d7. The king would go to d7, and actually... The king on d7 is perfect because then it runs away to c7 
uh, when it actually performs a really good job of defending the pawn. Pity. So, I mean, you can win a pawn straight up here with white. You know, you can go yeah, 98 exactly. check here and just take here. But that... But... There must be something better. There there's probably must something be something better. better. Okay, so what would have what is with this crowded I can't, I can't just I'm just not even looking at it because I think it okay. will just not work and d6 uh, there's four pieces pointing on d6 while we only have three pieces we could take one piece away by going to rook d3 maybe but then the pieces are getting less and less and there's no forced win combination I assume mm -hmm. so check takes Check, takes, takes, takes. But rook d3. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Rook takes, king takes. Mm. And then how to follow up? Not sure. Um, I keep this in the back of my head. What about a move like... Ah, uh, this is also... Oh, this is... Mm, mm, mm. Oh, there's a lot of nice motives. So, okay. in order to not uh, delay the show too long, what is the actual move? Because I cannot okay. immediately find it, unfortunately. So, we, the first move you look at is knight f6 check, of course, king e7. And here, you either try and play something, and then you start to realize, hold on, if I could actually check this king again, it would be mate. In fact, your <laughs> idea of moving the knight... It just took too long. Right? Yes. It just yes. took three moves. So what if you could check him a lot quicker? Well, that's when you see the delightful. Oh, no. Yep. Oh. Oops, oops. Sorry, not rook b6. Don't mouse slip, but rook b7. That is and so cool. This is pretty much uh, all she wrote. So This is so beautiful. Um, oh damn it yeah. that I didn't see it. Once again I made a mistake. I'm you're learning by yeah. doing trans tactics. I did the same mistake in the last time where I was only looking on one side of the board where the action is yeah. happening and I forgot the other pieces. That's Have right. to get used to that. Now what happens if you do not take back? You on just A5. Yeah. Well you can go rook c7 but worst case you go back to c4 you hit the pawn again. And there's not really much. And there. then and there's a five. Yeah, and then there's a five. Mm. But actually, in the game, Fisher did it the other way around. He actually, he actually took on a five oh, first. Oh, that is cool. Yeah. Yeah, and after rook c seven, knight c four, rook b seven. Now he wants to go a five, but after a five, Black has got b five, right? So instead, he just put the rook on b five instead, and wow, Dural actually resigned because now a five is forced. You still can't move the knight from c8 and you win. So a pretty simple tactic, I would say. Not too difficult. Unfortunately, I couldn't. I, I hope you at home could find this one. Please. I'm really interested. How many of you um, got like a solution correct when you were checking? I, if you want yeah, to, I'm you curious. can write it into the comments. I would be Please just very write. curious. Please do. I'm, I'm also curious. Okay. Not too difficult. Okay. Let's uh, look at um, this one's a bit tricky. So good. Okay. So let's have a look. So this one is white to play. This is the game Fisher against Self from a simultaneous exhibition in 1964. Clearly, once again, we have a position. It looks like a, something that might come from an Evans Gambit or something like that. That's. <laughs> If I had to guess the opening, it would be an Evans gambit. Mm -hmm. uh, White's bishop is currently on for three, but clearly Black's king is a bit stuck in the center. Um, okay. Okay, I see some I see some nice ideas. Time to pause the video. Yeah. Check it out on yourself. And I want to give a check on d6 with the knight. Right. The so... That's where your your uh, eyes are. Yeah, it's the first focus I have, of course. Yes. Now the king has but... three options. Mm -hmm. 
staying on e7 i th i hope or i think this will fail because of knight going to f5 check really um but then actually well, i don't know there's a lot of calculation that needs to be yeah so it has to be taken otherwise um i think it's going to go yeah yeah it has to be taken uh, taking back on f5, attacking the queen. Where does the queen go to? Taking right. the bishop on b5, maybe. And then I want to give some rook checks. Right. Okay, but that, that you're going to need to be precise in that line. So, yes, because the so bishop like goes to e6 and nothing is threatening anymore. All kinds anymore. of things, exactly. So there's lots of blocks. There are lots of threats. So you've got to be really, really careful about okay. that one, actually. Okay, okay, okay. Pity it looked really nice, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, it's you're on the right <laughs> lines. I mean, it's definitely, as I say, in all the sessions that we do, if the move doesn't work, the idea might still be good. So you want yeah. to always yeah. keep that. And you might be able to finesse it. So, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Okay, so what about... Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm seeing a checkmate threat. It's queen going to c7. Right, queen to c7. Now we're talking. Yes, we're talking now. Because right. immediately uh, knight to d6 is a, a check and the queen would have to... Take on d6. Now, Brilliant. how okay, to avoid so that? How to avoid that? Well, black has actually only really got one move here. Knight to d6 is killing, but does black have the move queen d7? The point being that after knight d6 check, I now am able to put the king on e7, mm -hmm. attacking the queen, attacking the knight, attacking your bishop. And if you take on c8, I probably take with this rook. And it looks as though... I survive as black. The king can now go back to f8. Crazy. And I'm out of danger, right? So, queen to c7, threatening knight d6 is good. But once again, it's one of those moments where we might need to finesse one more time. Yeah. Okay, so. Okay. I am not seeing it, I think. I thought about h3. But it doesn't help because you can actually, black just takes on b5 and then on c4. Not mm -hmm. nice. Probably a little bit slow, yeah. Okay, one last thought. Um, what about rook d1? Bingo. Now Bingo sounds talking. good to me. <laughs> now we are talking. Now we are talking. Rook d1, because you are specifically preventing queen d7. Queen d7. Yeah. And now when uh, black takes, okay, on b5. The question is, do we now play knight d6, or what do we do? Well, now we can still play queen c7 because the checkmate threat is on the board well once again. Well done. Exactly. Oops. We can still play queen c7 because the checkmate is still on the... With rook d8. ...still a threat and we are in good shape, basically. Yeah. So what happens after bishop d7? Bishop d7 is the only move. And then we just take on b7, maybe? You could, but I think... There's something obviously. better, right? Yeah, I would say there's probably something better. Uh, okay, let's check on d6. The king goes okay, to so e7. Okay, so check. King goes to e7. And this is where... Remember how I was speaking to you about... The uh, old ideas. The old ideas that you never... Yeah. Uh, you never rule them out. So maybe it is actually the knight going to f5 check. Brilliant. Well yeah. done. Yeah. Really, because, really good. Because um, if you take, you take back. Yeah. 
Yeah. And it opens the line on e1. So Brilliant. queen has to take, I guess. So the queen has to take. Yeah, there's this only option. Yeah. And um, how do we continue strongest? I believe queen d6 check. Exactly. If the king goes... Well, yeah, carry on. Queen d6. King if the king goes... Has to go... Has to go to e8. Yeah, to otherwise we just take yep. rook. And then the rook check on e1. Okay. Bishop, Bishop goes in between. And then we check mate on d7. Brilliant. Woo! Oh, I feel good. That's fantastic. <laughs> That's really, really, wow. really, really good. Nice. I'm very, I'm very, 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 very happy that you managed to do that. <laughs> Thanks a lot. That's wow, really, that was so cool. That's that's really, oh. I mean, awesome. This is uh, this is probably that. one. Uh, I took everything I learned from your trans tactics so far, and I think I applied it quite okay-ish. Of course, you gave me some hints, but yeah, it is. No, but I mean, you, wow, nice. You, you really did. Uh, fantastic. You were. Thanks. Thanks very much. That really that feels well, that really feels well. great. So, okay, so this was the game, and basically in the game after e takes f five, actually his opponent played rook c eight. This didn't change anything because now, well, this part you still this is you you do need to get this still. So this is the last okay. part. Okay. Okay. So, okay. so um. I think if I take, I take. Ah, oh, yeah, I think it works. So, what about rook d7 check? Well done. And so rook d7 check. Followed up by rook, rook e1 d7. check. Um, rook e1 check, believe it or not, is the first. Oh, sorry, it's the first move that I saw here. Yeah. To play rook e1, but actually. Not working. Um, oh, oh, yeah. My oh, my goodness. You can actually go king f6 here, and believe it or not... I don't believe it. <laughs> and and there's I, actually, I don't there's believe actually you. No way, yeah, there's, there's actually no way to win this... Uh, to win this... Uh, to win this position. No easily. freaking way. Yeah, he's got the two rooks, and it's probably all right. Wow. Yeah. It's probably just all right. So, unfortunately... This one doesn't quite work. Okay. Uh, well, then so we, we do the other. A, we need a finesse here. Then we do um, f6. And then we do rook e1 check. Correct. That's the right yeah, way. That's the, now, I mean, that's there's only those two possibilities. Yeah. So. And actually, it's nearly mate. It's quite beautiful. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. So knight e4. And now rook takes e4 exactly. check. And now, of course, the difference is we have a whole extra rook and it's winning beautiful so nice that was, fisher was by the way this was a uh this was a uh a simultaneous exhibition right so <laughs> fisher was fisher was even able <laughs> oh to to do this <laughs> um in uh you know uh in yeah, a simultaneous in, in, match, he in just simultaneous. pops out those moves. Jeez. Yeah, quite quite incredible. So Fisher requires some more attention. So we will Fisher skip our training yeah, we'll, today we'll and go next. for another one because it's yeah, it's I'm also on a run, so I don't want to stop that. <laughs> right. So Wow, this looks insane. How can white not win this? This is my first idea I have. Like, it's it looks so. Crushing. I mean, it's quite. It's it, it is a relatively, I would say, straightforward process. Yeah. This one, um, and I I do expect you to 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 get this. So okay. let, let's see. Let's see if we can. So. Very, very interesting. Well, okay, it requires a little bit of uh, thinking. So, for you at home, time to pause the video if you want to and think on your own. How can White solve this? Gosh, so these are, yeah, so I'm, I'm beginning to dislike those positions 
a little because the options are so many. So I, I, I f of first moves, it's even right. even uh, queen taking on h7 has to be considered for a second, but um, even for a second more even, yeah. Yeah, now, I mean, queen takes h, yes, but not not quite, right? I mean, it's yeah. It's not a necessary it, move, unless it it's mate won't. immediately. Yeah, yes, it, 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 it doesn't, so. Now, besides the very obvious uh, bishop taking on g7 with a check, um, there's always this little problem. So black has some threats, two tiny ones, so... Yeah, I think we have to take back, otherwise the rook will be taken. And then how to proceed? Is it that simple? Is it really that simple? I think I might have this solution. So let me think in my head. Bishop okay. takes g7, the king takes back. The queen... Uh, um, keep on going. Good, good, good. ...gives good. a good check message. on h6. The king goes to, I don't know. It has to go to h8, actually, because yes, after f6, it would be checkmate immediately. Correct. f6, um, I think the rook has to go to g8, unless the bishop takes before, but then... Oh! Gosh, oh, gosh. oh, oh, oh. You've got something. You're getting excited. Uh, yeah, I see that it doesn't work if the bishop takes on f6, because if we take back, yes. the rook gives a check on g8. Uh, okay. How nasty is that? Yeah. We have to and go if the to, king goes into the corner. Then we are checkmated. I cannot believe it. Wow. Queen takes f3 is me. Should we put that on the board? Because that's really nice. Yeah, so. yeah, it is beautiful. Oh. So you're saying the destructive sacrifice takes. Yeah. Queen h6, the king has to go to h8. And now if f6, you're saying black can take. Yeah. Because the rook can't take as a mate on g2. And exactly. after g takes f6, black has got the move rook g8 check. And the point is that if the king goes in the corner, black has got the nasty counter attack. Queen takes f3 and bishop takes f3. Is so close, so, but so far. Aha. Uh -huh. So we have to be... Now, what about g6 here, though? Because there is still a nice checkmate threat. f takes g, f takes g, and then... How well, to stop that? I can this, only see... What about this check here? Oh, what about it? Rook f2, f um, f1 to f2. Oh, yeah, there no, you go. That's pretty good. That's that's probably it. Check because if I go on queen g5. g5, check, you can probably just take, right? And if takes... Then we give a nice check. Question yeah. is... Oh, oh, still the question is a little bit, but no. not that much. No, I think, no. I think white is winning this. Yeah, easy win for white. So, yeah. this wow. actually is, you know, that was the solution. Is the way. Wow. This is the way. So well done. Yeah, it's finding g six, and I guess the 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 um the uh the importance of uh, this move or, or or this exercise is to show that you know when when your when your heart is telling you you have to go with this move just double check especially in positions like this when your king is wide open hmm. right your 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 hand is telling you to play the move f6 right <laughs> your hand is telling you f6 is the move yeah right yeah. but in fact uh you know um it will backfire. It could easily. On the be. other hand, I wanted to find, uh, I'm double happy. I found a solution for white, but also one for black. Okay. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> well, I found how to win with black. With oh, the I see. Queen. So you found the solution. <laughs> with yeah, that's 
Oh, Lawrence, no, no. that was that was nice. That was juicy. That was lovely. That was Mr. Yes. Bobby Fisher. Uh, some yes. very very fine pieces, and uh, yeah, freaking, it's so enjoyable if you find the solutions. It may be Sudoku. It may be a riddle, a logic riddle, or it may be. Uh, the one and only chess, the game we all adore and love so much. But if you find a this puzzle solution that is, yeah, you feel uh, the ego boost is a bit higher than it probably should be. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly is, yeah. Thanks Certainly. a lot, Lawrence. We Thank see you, each buddy. other soon enough. Yes.